Hi, I'm back with uh, another video. This one is on the Bren gun, if you haven't already guessed. Um, so I'm going to run you through probably basically a full overview of the gun uh, itself. Uh, if you haven't already clicked, I am based in the UK, so unfortunately this is a deactivated weapon. Um, so what I'm going to do is basically run through this. This is a particular one here is a Mark II, uh, English. Uh, and then we'll talk about the brand gun a bit more in general. So before we go in for a real detailed look, <clears throat> we'll start at muzzle and work our way back. So at the uh, muzzle there, you can see the bell flash hider. This is obviously, as the name suggests, designed to uh, limit flash uh, developed by the cartridge uh, upon automatic firing. Uh, supposedly this worked quite well, um, so it eliminated the... Um, the flash from the muzzle. Later ones, once they're converted to 7.62, we'll go into that in a bit, uh, they had a uh, flash hider more like the uh, SLR rifle that the British Army were using uh, at the time. So going down, you can see the barrel there. The barrel's actually quite a heavy barrel. Um, I can't remember the diameter of it, but the whole point is uh, it's not really a long for sustained fire weapon, so the point is that you can change it quite quickly. Uh, and I'll show you how to do that. Now you'll just see a grey band on the sort of halfway down the barrel. That's a gas port. Um, <clears throat> that actually is attached to the barrel, and when you replace the barrel, it comes off with it. That's got four different settings, uh, again, which we'll go into a little bit more detail. And the uh, just behind that is the little A frame bipod. <coughs> Mark II had the uh, simplified version. This was to basically ease uh, manufacture. Uh, the original Mark I's had telescopic bipods. So coming down the, again behind the uh, the bipod and you can see this little catch here. Which I'll try my best. There we go. This little catch here is uh, one of the mounting points for the uh, sustained fire bipod, uh, tripod rather, uh, and if it was going to be attached to anything else, sometimes they were putting an AA mount, uh, anti-aircraft gun mount, uh, <clears throat> and that was one of the points they attached. It allows you to pivot up and down with the gun. The other one, I'll just skip forward, is at the back here, just underneath there, that pops out in the same fashion. Okay, so moving further down the gun, you've got the carrying handle there. <coughs> carrying handle, uh, again, is integral to the uh, to the gun, or sorry, the barrel rather. That allows the uh, facility for a quick change, so you don't burn your hair, uh, hands after a number of magazines have been shot off. The, bar the, um, <coughs> the carrying handle is really good in terms of its design. <coughs> Not only is it quite comfortable to carry, which meets one of its objectives but it also moves to various different positions so originally you saw it in the what I'd call like if you're just going to carry the gun around but this if, bear with me that locks out so you can have a good strong position when you're firing from the prone but also if you've got a sling on that allows the uh, fire to have something forward a bit like the uh, grips on M4 type rifles uh, and the uh, C80 that the army, British Army are using now, which are the foregrips. So it just gives an extra p uh, place to purchase. Coming back, I'll tell you what, I'll just switch the rifle around so in the light. Coming back, you can see the uh, catch there, which is the release mechanism to change your barrel. So, unfortunately, we can't change the barrel because of this being a deactivated UK gun, it's fixed. In that position so you can't replace it with a functioning barrel to facilitate making the gun live <coughs> so as I do my best to describe it there's a little catch behind which you'd flick up you'd have to push that forward I imagine the uh, dust cover that's the dust cover there for the magazine housing um, you'd flick this up so it's at 90 degrees if not uh, a bit further round and you should just be able to twist and pull the barrel off when you do remove the barrel, <coughs> the gas port from here comes out as well. Uh, from here it pops out. So it's full. It's the full system really. Sorry, just going back to the gas port. Just a closer look. 
there's uh, just this little switch here allows you to change the gas setting. Uh, I think I read somewhere that it was designed for dust. Uh, cold weather and things but that could be rubbish. There's four settings anyway which would allow the flow of gas to be altered which usually could alleviate any jams. So coming back we've got a 30 round magazine. Uh, it's a box magazine for the 303 <coughs> which as you can see is in the shape of a banana and that's because the uh, 303 was a rimmed case. <coughs> Meaning when you stack them, they went in a <coughs> sort of a semicircle shape. As you can see, the rifle is in this position. It's cocked. The action does work. It won't chamber around at all, even the dud one, but it does cock and dry fire. <coughs> uh, I'll do a quick strip of the gun later on. Moving back, you've got the pistol grip um, and the uh, the trigger guard and trigger housing. That the is the select switch, so you've got semi-automatic or automatic, which is obviously full, uh, and safe. <coughs> Come back a little bit further, this is the folding leaf sight. A simplification on the uh, Mark 1, which had a dial sight, I believe, which is a bit of a stocky affair. There was a big knurled nut to allow you to change the uh, sight and tweak it. This here, this little pin, I don't know if you can see very well, that pin there uh, is the disassembly pin. I'll run through that in a moment. And there at the back you've got the butt, obviously made out of wood. Uh, so that's the general features of the Just disassembly of the brain gun, this is the Mark II's, and also looking at the amp version, it's going to be slightly different to a uh, <coughs> to maybe a full live gun because you can't take the barrel off and you know, bits and pieces aren't in existence, so they've taken away to just the piston. Take the magazine out, if it was a live gun, you could also check if it's live or if it had anything in it. This one doesn't, luckily. Turn it home. There's this little pin here. And this allows you to take the butt off and the whole bottom part of the gun. Pull that out, like so. And then to remove the breech block, just cut the weapon and it comes out. Locking handle, it comes out the little box there. And it's just a solid piece. Uh, that doesn't move, all that does is hook onto the uh, bolt. The bolt is a two piece setup. This bit is meant to have a gas piston on it, obviously, it doesn't, it's been chopped off at some point, and that reciprocates bringing the bolt cocking the weapon and firing it when you pull the trigger. <coughs> and unfortunately, that's as far as I can strip the gun, so I can give you a shot <coughs> onto the underside of it. Don't know how much you can see there. Uh, you definitely really what you won't be able to see is how they deactivated the weapon. <coughs> there's a, uh, a steel barrel welded here at the end of the barrel, and they've also milled the underside of the barrel away so, and spot welded certain parts as well. It's really just completely knackered. You're never going to be able to get this thing to go again if you wanted to. So it's deactivating the weapon. This here, uh, I suppose, the lower. As you call it on an AR-15 now, it's got a return spring, it's quite soft really. It's a heavy old breech block <coughs> assembly to really push back. That does work, the fact the gun weighs a lot, you've got a big spring in there as well. I think the recoil, to be fair, would be fairly uh, minimal. Again, I'm not sure if you can see it, it's a fairly simple trigger mechanism, but simple means reliable, which is always a good thing in the field. Now, <coughs> assembly, that's literally just reversing the process now. So first, in goes the cocking handle. Pull that back together. Bolt just simply, oops, do it that way, that might help. Let's have a firing pin cut out as well. 
So now it's all back together. All I do is push the locking pin in. Put the pin in it. Pack it. And it's ready to fire. Really no simple to do. Obviously there's a bit more to it because it's just taking a barrel, a gas piston. Uh, if you're going to clean the firing pin, there's a lot more to it than that. Um, but obviously that's about as far as I can go. Uh, just as a footnote, as promised, there's the uh, Bren on its tripod. Got a bit of a lighting issue in here tonight. Not the best. Um, as you can see at the back, where it clips on, the um, <coughs> that dial allows you to carefully uh, adjust the elevation of the gun. And this axis here again it's got degree marks on it and you can uh, edit, uh, edit alter the uh, angle of fire from the gun so you could probably fire quite precisely from it but as mentioned these were rarely used um, these were sort of I think kept well back behind the lines because they're heavy cumbersome to carry uh, and there's probably very little need for them but I should imagine it was very accurate once mounted on there uh, and to a degree would have filled the uh, heavy machine gun roll almost with it. But anyway, it's a little interesting footnote and uh, I'll speak to you guys soon.